Hi, we're doing video live, and this is the Dunnigan series. This is the second one in the series in Dunnigan, and this one is the Dunnigan series. <laughs> it's video live, and we're on the road again. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure if this is going to be the sailing one or this is going to be just on the road because doing video live, we're never quite sure how we're going to do something until we do it. We're not quite sure how it's going to turn out until it turns out. We just seem to get on the road, and being on the road again, that's what we're doing. Recording it on the road. If you don't believe me, take a look. We are literally pulling a 360 if you look around me. And that is the church. We're looking at the church off of to my left, so to speak. And you can see it in the background, how the Dunnigan Christian Fellowship is back behind me. And that's where we began as a missionary outreach. We began to restore a 100-year-old church that had been around for a long time. And you could Google it and probably find it in Dunnigan and the history of it. It was kind of neat the way that the Lord had brought us about. Because he had started us in Reno, Nevada. And I had heard that a friend of mine, Pastor Bob Langfield from Klamath Falls, Oregon, had come down to Dunnigan. And that he had fallen in love with the area. He said that certain things, and you know, people know the story or don't. It, but he loved it, and he was moving here, and he bought some property, and kind of like began this work because he had been in an RV, and coming out of the RV, they had stopped over at the rest stop, and spending the night there, they came out, and he went for a jog, and he found this church all boarded up and locked up. Well, the church that was boarded up and locked up wasn't called Dunnigan Christian Community, but it was a church, and Bob saw it, and he said the Lord spoke to him and told him to open it up. Because Bob had just had his retirement party, and I'd seen him up in uh, up at the uh, Klamath Falls retirement party for him because I had seen him when he first arrived in Klamath Falls. As a matter of fact, that's kind of how I knew Bob. I was in Klamath Falls a long time before Bob was. But then Bob came from Applegate Christian Fellowship, where he had been saved and where he had been an elder, and God sent him out from there, and God sent him to Klamath Falls, Oregon, and he started Klamath Christian Fellowship, the original, and when he came there, hey, when he opened up, by the time he opened the doors, about the second or third service, I showed up. And guess what? By the time he retired, I was there from the beginning, and I was there at the end of his ministry, when he retired. Now, when he came out of retirement, that's kind of interesting story, too, and that's the story we're telling. That's the Dunnigan series, because, you see, he came out of retirement, because he said he found something interesting in Klamath Falls, and he said he found kind of a sign and a wonder. And so he, in his own faith, retired, or had retired. But then he began the ministry of Dunnigan Christian Community Church. And this is the story, and how you'll know the rest of the story. It's always kind of interesting when God does something like that, because you never know. What happened? What went on? What was the good? What was the bad? What may have been the ugly about sometimes some of the things that happened? Well, let me tell you what God has done that no man call evil and what God has done that no man call good. Because after all, God did it. Didn't he? Or did he? You see, we all have the capability of being good. We all have the capability of being evil. And if you don't think so, Think about what Jesus said to Peter. Flesh and blood hath not revealed that to you, Peter, but my Father in heaven has told you, Thou art the Son of the living God. And Peter went, Yeah, that's me. I'm Peter. Ho, oh, ho, dig it, baby. And then right away, of course, Jesus says, Hey, uh, I got some news for you, bros. Um, I got some good news and some bad news. You want the good news? I'm going to be resurrected. Well, that's good. But doesn't that mean you got to die? Yeah, well, that's the bad news. You see, the bad news is I'm going to be beat up. I'm going to be stomped on. I'm going to be chopped on. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to Jerusalem and I'm going to be whipped and scourged, you know, within an inch of my life. And then before my life is even, you know, terminated just by being whipped and scourged, I'm going to have to carry some godforsaken piece of wood, you know, all the way down to outside of Jerusalem and get crucified. Peter says, ah, uh -uh, no way, dude. Says, you know what? You're self-destructive. I need to lock you up. Shut up, dude. You, you ain't doing it. Well, guess what? Jesus said, uh, Peter, 
be thou silent. No, that's not what he said. He says, get thee behind me, Satan. You don't even know what manner of spirit you're speaking. Peter goes, well, I guess I just lost the top ten disciple. I thought I was number one. Now I'm number like 11 and maybe number 12. Except that's Judas. Ooh, what have I done? Well, you see, Peter didn't know what the end of the story would be. And that's probably what you think. You know, if you know anything about here at Union Church, what the story of Dunnigan Christian Community Church was. Because some of those that were there, they know some of the story. Some of those that were there know a lot of the story. But only God, who took a pebble like Peter, knows the rest of the story. And that's what the beauty of holiness is. You see, there's a completeness that comes in the word holy. It means to be complete, to be mature, to be set apart, to be sanctified, to be brought into a completeness of the creation of God that you were intended to be. Which, believe it or not, that means you were meant to be holy. Hey, this was one holy, awesome church. And at the time that I saw it, at the time that I lived it, at the time that I bear witness of it, at the time that I put my own hands on every pew inside this church, as I crawled in the dirt to its very foundation, as I every day set up the sanctuary, as every day I prayed for this fellowship, oh my God, how holy and awesome was the work the Lord has done and the Lord did in Dunnigan Christian Community Church. It was, it is, and it ever shall be a testimony unto the Lord of what God can do with someone like you.